everyone for joining us today. Um, as I said, my name is Dami. I am the PR lead for Binance in Africa. I'm going to introduce my colleagues first, and then I'm going to share some housekeeping rules for this uh, masterclass. So, um, Emmanuel, I think I'm the panelist again, correct? I'm a yeah. host. I'm the host now. Okay, great. Yeah. So the first person you can see is my colleague, Emmanuel. Emmanuel is going to be teaching one of the sessions today. He is the business development lead for Binance in Nigeria. Emmanuel, say hi. <laughs> hi, guys. Thanks for joining. Emmanuel, Thanks for joining. Um, and I'm sure we're going to have an awesome time today. So he'll be leading the second session, um, which will be all okay, about... Emmanuel, Emmanuel, your session, just correct me again, but you're going to be talking about Bitcoin and Bitcoin basics, correct? Yeah. Cool. So the second person I'm really excited to introduce you all to is my colleague, Tanya. Tanya is our South African lead, and she'll be talking to you all about Binance and um, giving you some other introductions about the company. Hi, everyone. Great to be here. Thanks, Demi. Thank you. And our special guest is Chris Annie. So Chris Annie is going to be covering the why, why exactly you're here, you know, how to become a successful trader. And Chris Annie, for those of you who don't know, he's an author, a teacher, a Bitcoin entrepreneur, a cryptocurrency trader, and an investor. And he's the CEO of digitalabundance.io, which is a group of Bitcoin and blockchain technology advocates that educate people on how blockchain will drive global economic revolution and social change. Am I correct on that, Chris? Is that a, is that a good enough introduction? <laughs> Great. Um, and I've got a bunch of my other colleagues as well who are going to be supporting. We have the angels from Nigeria and South Africa that are going to be able to answer a bunch of your questions. So here are the housekeeping rules before we start. First of all, um, attendees, please, 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 if you've got any questions during any of the sessions, please use the Q&A format. You'll see it at the bottom of the screen. Use that to ask questions. The chat function is just going to be for basic conversation, and it's where we're going to also share questions for our giveaway. So let me go over that again. If you have questions for the attendees, um, sorry, questions for the panelists during any of the sessions, please type them using the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. At the end of the session and at the end of, towards the end of the event, we're going to run through all those questions. In addition, um, the Binance Angels are going to answer the ones that they can for you while the speakers will answer the rest live. Um, if you wanna just chat among yourselves and just say hey or hi, you can use the chat function. And we will we'll be doing a giveaway today for 15 lucky people who can get some of the questions right. We're going to be having some questions based on the sessions that we're having today. So we'll be sharing that on the chat function and then there'll be some forms, you fill them in with your Binance ID if you have them and hopefully you'll be lucky enough to win. Um, so we're going to get started, first of all, with my colleague, Tanya. Tanya, like I said, is going to be introducing you all to Binance and giving you some other great information that will be really useful for the rest of the session. Great. Tanya. Um, Thanks. Uh, sorry. Uh, Emmanuel, I see that I've, um, uh, I'm uh, unable to share my screen. I'm not sure if you can um, either allow me to do that or I've also dropped you the presentation in um, WebEx. Um, I don't know if you're able to access that, but uh, guys, let me let me kick off in the meantime while um, while Emmanuel's getting that up and running. So yeah, as Demi said, I'm going to um, let me. All right, so I can see that. All right, thanks everyone. Okay, cool. Just checking, you can all see my screen. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time to load, but I'll um, I'll start in the meantime. So I'm just going to give a brief overview of Binance for those of you who don't know. Um, let me kick off. Um, can you guys see my presentation or not yet? It's still loading here. Still loading. Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll just start talking in the meantime while the presentation loads. So... Binance is obviously one of the largest or the largest uh, cryptocurrency exchange um, in the world. Today, I'm just going to cover some of the things um, that we, we look at. I think most people know Binance very well for being, for being a cryptocurrency exchange, but our business obviously extends far beyond just, just that aspect. 
Um, and I'm going to be taking you on a whirlwind tour just for 20 minutes to cover some of the things that um, that that finance looks after. So um, right now I'm going to speak from memory while the presentation loads. So please excuse me if I jump around a bit. But uh, Binance, basically, we, we, um, we have various components to our business. We've recently opened up um, some fiat gateways here in South Africa, and we've also obviously got some fiat channels open in Nigeria. Um, we operate in about 180 countries around the world. Um, we have um, our uh, applications are offered in 15 different languages, um, and uh, we have staff, I think, working in about 40 countries around the world at the moment. So we really are truly a decentralized uh, organization uh, that's that's actually thriving in many ways around the world. Guys, just give me a sec while I see if, uh, okay, I'm not gonna load the presentation in presentation view. Um, can you see if I've, if I've got it like this? No, we can see it like this. So it's better you just okay. please. Just okay. Scroll. Better you scroll. Okay, all right, cool. So I'm gonna scroll through it and then you can all see it. So, so Binance's vision really is around the freedom of money. Um, and we believe in spreading this freedom in, in many ways as possible. So, you know, freedom of press and freedom of money and things like that are very, very important. And I think people will, will see that particularly in the last 48 hours with everything going on in the world. And Binance is um, really our, our mission as an organization is to build the largest uh, infrastructure to enable that freedom of money in terms of, of um, cryptocurrencies. So that infrastructure is not just about having an exchange but it extends far beyond um, some of the other applications that we've got, which I'm going to cover very briefly today. Um, as I've said, Binance is, is the number one or the largest um, exchange in the world by trading volume. Um, the company grew incredibly quickly. Within 165 days, we'd become the number one exchange um, in the world. And you will see that um, from this, this next diagram here, um, that there's really a large ecosystem that's at play. Um, so we've got divisions that look after things like Binance Labs, our, um, our DEX, Binance Chain, the charity aspects. And then that is really encompassing our core business, which, which is more around the traditional cryptocurrency exchanges. Um, and I think we're offering some very, very sophisticated things in terms of futures and margin trading. Our P2P business is really taking off internationally at the moment. Um, we're enabling a huge number of fiat gateways for, for essentially to bring um, fiat into the crypto um, ecosystem as such. And, um, and we're building out uh, a huge number of aspects in terms of the cryptocurrency industry to try and, um, as I say, build that infrastructure of what Binance actually imagines. And um, you'll see there at the bottom some of the, the fiat currencies that we currently support. Um, and this is this is our ecosystem as at March. And, and if you follow us on on Twitter or any of our other profiles, you'll see that it really is growing day by day. Okay, so Binance at the moment, we're doing 1.4 million transactions per second. Um, it's, a, it's a huge load and we're one of the best performing exchanges in terms of security and performance. Um, our liquidity, we hold more than 50% of the, um, the liquidity around the, the major listings um, of cryptocurrencies around the world. And we're processing somewhere in the region of $2 billion worth of transactions in our daily volume every single day. Um, I touched on this as I, was, as I was opening. So Binance operates in 180 countries around the world. Plus, uh, we've got team members all over the world operating 24-7, 365. Um, I don't know if some of us ever sleep, but we keep going. And, uh, and we've got an interface currently in more than 15 languages around the world. Um, and there's more, more coming up, um, into this fold almost on a monthly basis. All right, so right now we've got um, four fully compliant operating businesses. So um, those, those in, are in the US, Singapore, um, Uganda, and a few others. We operate across four continents right now, and we're looking at expanding into another 14 regions. Um, in Binance, and there's a, there's a number of new regions also in the pipeline. I know a number of users are always asking, when is Binance coming to our country? Well, watch this space. We really are growing every single day. All right, the quality of the products um, or the projects that we list, I think that, you know, since I've started working for Binance, I found that there's a huge number of projects that have approached me to say, how can we actually get listed? 
And um, I think, you know, sometimes people aren't aware that there are very, very strict listing requirements to, to come into Binance. And um, there's a thorough due diligence done on every single project that we introduce onto the platform. Um, and you might be surprised to learn that less than 3% of the projects that actually apply for listings actually eventually make it onto Binance.com. Um, the, the team that runs this is completely independent. I know that even CZ himself often says that he is, um, you know, has no saying which projects are listed and which aren't. So, so there's, there's very strict criteria that we do follow in terms of any of the coins and the projects that we do list on Binance.com. Okay, um, right now on social media, we've got more than 1.4 million followers. Um, there's 250,000 people um, plus that follow us on Telegram. If you're not on any of our Telegram groups, please, you're could welcome to join the South Africa one, the Nigeria one. There's, there's many operating around the world. There's, there's obviously the main Binance one too. Um, and, and those um, Telegram groups are, are in more than 30 languages if English is not your first language. Okay, so I'm just going to touch on some of the projects or some of the, the aspects of the Binance ecosystem that are that are um, mentioned in the beginning. So Binance Chain is really um, building a core infrastructure in terms of building any secure blockchain applications, um, which offers instant transaction finality. Um, this has, uh, the Binance chain has recently um, announced some big uh, enhancements to it. So anybody interested in building anything on the Binance chain, you can always reach out to the team. Um, and they've really got a, like, a fantastic infrastructure that they're running um, on Binance chain. The next one is our academy. Um, the Blockchain Academy or the Binance Academy is looking at um, various aspects of education. There's everything from 101 videos to um, how, how to buy and sell cryptocurrencies, um, you know, with using your local fiat um, and anything, you know, they, they put out a lot of stuff recently around the Bitcoin halving. So anybody wanting to know more about the basics of cryptocurrencies or even some more advanced trading stuff um, in terms of what we offer for future margin savings, things like that. Um, it's all there. It's all for free. And there's really some, some great articles and some great videos that come out from, from Binance Academy. Um, the next one is our P2P um, area. So P2P is really taking off. Um, we've, we've seen some, some great growth here in Africa too. Um, this really allows you to do any peer-to-peer -peer trading um, on, on Binance using our P2P function. Um, and if you are interested in this, I really encourage you to go and look at this on, on Binance.com. Um, it, it works extremely well and this market is growing really at, a, at an exponential rate at the moment. Um, and we've seen record volumes going through our P2P business right now. On um, then for Binance Charity, so um, the Binance Charity Foundation is a non-for-profit um, organization and we are doing a, a huge amount of work actually in the charity space. Um, right now, a lot of that effort has been around um, COVID. Uh, for those people who don't know, for example, the Binance Charity Foundation just recently donated 15,000 uh, PPE suits into South Africa. Um, we have some masks on the way, some N95 masks, um, and they're doing all sorts of charity work around the COVID efforts in, um, in all, almost in every single country around the world where Binance operates. So um, it's, it's really a, an amazing effort. Um, and all the, all the donations are actually tracked on the blockchain to provide like pure transparency around any of these charity initiatives. Okay, Binance Labs, um, this is really an incubation space for, for um, anybody who, who has a project in the, in the um, blockchain or crypto space that they want to incubate. So the lab is testing out those ideas and seeing how they, how they work. Um, there's more information about that if, if, um, if anybody wants some, so you can you look, can look at our website and, and see the details around that. Um, and then we've got the, the token launch platform. So this is really for the um, exclusive token sales um, for some of the most transformative crypto projects that are out there. And the, the launch pad really allows new projects to come into the Binance ecosystem um, and have the exposure that many projects would not, would not necessarily have without, being, without that collaboration with Binance. Um, Binance Info, it's just uh, also an, an, um, an information site just on general projects that are out there. Um, we often hold AMAs that's Ask Me Anything with, with a lot of coins out there. But generally, the, the Binance Info is, is an independent um, 
platform that provides um, some details into the white papers around coins, um, independent ratings, market data, um, and things like that. So if you wanted any more in-depth inf information about any of the specific projects or coins that are available on Binance.com, uh, Binance Info is the place to go for that. Um, and then in terms of Binance Research, it's also today, it's providing data-driven insights and analysis for um, anything in the crypto space. And really the, the goal of this is to increase the transparency around a number of um, projects that are happening in this space um, and, and improve really the, the information and the quality of information that's out in the ecosystem um, and try and you know, show the good from the bad and weed out the bad stuff and, and try and provide some transparency around a number of crypto projects. So that's on the Binance research side. And then Binance Cloud, it's an all-in-one solution for building and launching exchanges. Um, they are, it, it really gives the ability for people to partner with Binance um, and easily roll out our exchange from a, a cloud perspective um, in any jurisdictional country. Um, and there's a team working on this for anybody who would, who would or might be interested in that. And, and um, you'll see on the slide, there is a, a link to an address that you can go to um, for that. Um, and then Binance X is really for developers, um, and it's it's a platform that that again allows developers to learn how to trade, or I mean how to build um, applications in the crypto and the blockchain space. Um, and it's it's um, we you know it includes other applications, for example Binance Chain, uh, Binance.com's API wallet, Trust Wallet, and things like that. And then I think I've got one more to go, which yes is around our Trust Wallet. Um, this is a decentralized uh, wallet application that anybody, if you do want to store your cryptocurrencies, here is a, um, a wallet and an interface that people are able to use um, to store the, their currencies off, off the exchange, which obviously is what we recommend. Um, and Binance Trust Wallet is, is providing that service for you. So if you're looking for a secure wallet, this is the place to go. Uh, and then BNB, that, um, very briefly, that is the native token that uh, Binance uses. Um, it's got multiple applications. Um, you'll see on some of my next slides places where the BNB token is being used. But um, you'll see that it's, it's um, performing relatively well in the market. It's, and at the same time, people are actually allowed to use their BNB um, as to pay for their trading fees on Binance.com. And if you do use your BNB to pay for those trading fees, you do end up getting a discount on them. So, uh, so it's always a good idea to hold some BNB, um, and yeah, I think it's say it's really um, fueling the ecosystem. And then uh, these are these are just uh, examples of some of the organisations that are currently using the BNB coin. And there's a few slides on that. Right, um, I think I had 20 minutes, so 20 minutes it is. I, I'm really looking forward to this webinar, and uh, thanks to everyone for for taking part. Um, I think it's going to be very, very informative. So um, if you've got any questions, as Danny said, post them in the Q&A and myself and the Binance Angels will reach out and try and answer as many as we can. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Tanya. Um, so we actually have um, a few th housekeeping things to go through again. I want to first thank our media partners for their support. We've got Global Crypto, formerly known as SA Crypto, uh, Lightblocks.live um, Sam with Sammy. I don't know if Sammy's on this call. And Bitcoin KE. Uh, thank you all for your support. Um, Tanya, can you please just say a few words about Global Crypto? Um, since yeah, sure. Being part of joining us. So Global Crypto is one of our, our, our media partners. Yeah, so those who don't know Global Crypto, um, they were formerly known as SA Crypto probably, I think, until 10 days ago, or they they, they rebranded re about two weeks ago from SA Crypto to Global Crypto. Um, it's run by James Preston and a team here in South Africa, but they're really doing like incredible work um, around the world. Um, and uh, you'll see that, for example, that they've just launched some, some amazing pop podcasts. Um, they had Anthony Pompolano as one of their first guests, and um, he's one of my favorite guys in crypto. Um, and um, oh, and, and Anthony has this great quote, by the way. He always says, um, "Bankers live in Excel, uh, developers live in GitHub. The one speaks the language of the past, and the other of the future." So it's it's for me, it's a great quote. So yeah, so it's, um, Global Crypto is now um, reporting on a on an international level. And if you're not following them on Twitter or you're not part of the um, following what they do from a podcast space, 
um, I highly recommend them and the team. They're doing some incredible work in the crypto space. So that's just a quick overview from Global Crypto. Thank you, Tanya. So a few people have asked to see me, so for me to put my video on. Apologies, my internet is a bit shaky, but for those asking, I will put it on for a few minutes. Uh, nice to see you all, nice to meet you all. So we're actually going to go um, into our first giveaway. Like I mentioned, today 15 people are going to be winning um, $10. Um, for answering some of our questions correctly. So there is a Google form that you have to fill in. And if you get the answers to the questions of the form correct, um, then you will be selected as a winner by Derek. Derek is going to select, I think the first five correct answers will be the people who win. So I'm gonna share right now the doc, um, the Google doc. If you all check the chat function, you should be able to see the Google doc now. So that's the first question, first, form for the giveaway there are two questions so please go ahead and answer them and Derek will be in touch with um to the correct people with the who got the answers right sorry about that I'm trying to type and also speak <laughs> um so while that's happening uh let me just introduce you to our second speaker Emmanuel as I mentioned for those of you who just joined us um Emmanuel is the business development manager for Binance in Nigeria and he's going to be talking to to you all about the Bitcoin basics for those of you that are new to this industry or just want to have a refresher. Um, and when Emmanuel is done, we'll go into a second giveaway and then we'll also uh, finally have Chrisani talk to us about being a, prof a profitable crypto trader. So in the meantime, um, Emmanuel, can you give everyone just one more minute? Um, let them answer the questions in the form. If you haven't seen the form, I'm sharing it again. This is the first form for the giveaway. We're going to select five people who get the answers correctly. The first five people. Um, Emmanuel, I'm going to mute myself now, so please take it away. Thank you very much, Dami. Um, congratulations to the winners of the first giveaway session. Um, I think Derek will announce the winners in maybe the next, um, the next um, giveaway um, time. Um, so in the next um, 20 minutes, I want to just talk to us briefly about what Bitcoin is. Now, I know 20 um, minutes, you would know already. The, um, Derek, are you there? You want to say something? I want to see your face too. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm live. No, your, your video is so bad. We can see your screen, I mean your face. Yeah, but, yeah, he's, but because he's, he has to do his presentation. Uh, <laughs> okay, 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 fine. I just... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, my face is there actually. I'm live. I believe everyone can see me. Yes. You can see me? Yeah, cool. I, I can see you. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Don't mind, Chris. So um, 20 minutes is never enough time to talk about Bitcoin, actually. So I'm just going to try and do the best with the little time I have. Um, so that for those of you that are new to crypto, for those of you that have never, I've just heard about Bitcoin and think it's a scam. And, you know, just address a few concerns. So for those of us that feel Bitcoin is a scam and, you know, just this is your first time of attending a meetup or attending a meeting where we are talking about Bitcoin, um, I'll just play a very short video for just five minutes out of my time and then I'll just hit on it. Uh, let's see. So, let's check out the sound. That the internet is going to be one of the knowing A. I think that the internet is going to be one of the major forces for reducing the role of government. And the one thing that's missing, but that will soon be developed, is a reliable e-cash, a method whereby on the internet you can transfer funds from A to B without A knowing B or B knowing A. What is a Bitcoin? What is Bitcoin? What backs a Bitcoin? You put some of your money, real money, online, and it turns into Bitcoin. I don't even know why we call them coins, except that they call it coins in a name. I think Bitcoin has turned into a massive multiplayer online game where speculators are trying to outspeculate each other. Is it a, a, a means of exchange or an asset class? I see you taking my real dollars and <laughs> then you give me virtual money in return. 
Thanksgiving dinner, my grandmother asked me, what the heck is this Bitcoin stuff anyway, right? And I said to her, do you remember when Visa cards first came out? You were used to paying with cash or with a check, and then a Visa came out. It was this weird payment system that you didn't understand. And she said, yeah, I remember that. I said, well, Bitcoin is just the next evolution of another payment system. Bitcoin, by now, you've probably heard of it. The wild fluctuations in its price has gained the attention of the mainstream financial media. But Bitcoin is much more than just your average investment. Beneath all the hype and hysteria lies what could be the most important technology of our lifetimes. So what exactly is it? To fully appreciate the characteristics that make Bitcoin a potentially world-changing technology, we first need to understand what money is. Currency started developing uh, six to 9,000 years ago, some sort of medium of exchange, and people used something of value. The societies around the world, though, started to select gold and silver as their primary currency about 3,000 years ago, and then uh, about uh, 680 BC, uh, they became money when they were minted into coins of equal weights. Governments started creating representative currencies where uh, you deposit your gold and silver or they have gold and silver in the treasury and they come out with notes that are basically a claim check on the gold. So they're supposed to be as good as gold because you can always convert them into gold. Throughout history, precious metals were chosen as money, not through government decree, but because of their unique features. Gold is rare easily recognizable, portable, durable, and divisible. Above all, because gold is difficult to find and labor-intensive to mine, refine, and mint, it has always been perceived as a store of value. At Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, delegates from 44 allied and associate countries arrived for the opening of the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference. In modern history, as World War II was coming to an end, in 1944, the Allied nations met at the small town of Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. Here, they drafted a new financial system, which would stabilize the world's financial system once the war ended. With the United States poised to enter a golden age of prosperity, the U.S. dollar was chosen to be the world's reserve currency. The Bretton Woods system was created after the Second World War at the Bretton Woods Conference in New Hampshire. And rather than using gold as the means of exchange between uh, countries, as was the case under the old gold standard, the dollar was going to be used. Um, the dollar was chosen because back then it was as good as gold. Under this new system, the countries of the world would tie their currencies at a fixed rate to the U.S. dollar. And because most of the world's gold was held in U.S. vaults, the U.S. dollar would be backed by gold at a fixed price of $35 per ounce. This created a system where the currencies of the world were effectively backed by gold through the U.S. dollar. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets. The Bretton Woods system lasted for about 25 years, but in August of 1971, President Richard Nixon called for an emergency press conference where he announced foreign countries would no longer be able to convert their U.S. dollar holdings into gold. This surprise move would come to be known as the Nixon shock. With this one announcement, President Nixon effectively created our current monetary system, a system where no currency is backed by gold or anything of value. This is what is known as a fiat currency. Fiat currency is currency that's backed by nothing except government promises. The word fiat is a Latin word, and it basically means currency that's circulating by force. If people have confidence in that currency, and if there's enough government force, that will enable the currency to circulate for a period of time until people lose confidence in the currency. Money is a medium of exchange, and the way it has evolved is that it's always something of intrinsic value until the modern age, when the politicians say, well, we don't need anything of intrinsic value anymore. All we need is political decree. We can say this is money, this piece of paper is money. Now money has a new characteristic. But underneath it all, there's the same concept in place that nobody ever seems to challenge, and that is that governments have a right to declare something of, of no value to be money. 
money and you must accept it. That's really the problem and uh, it's still the problem today. Without anything tangible backing the currencies we use today, governments around the world have been able to issue unlimited amounts of new currency without restraint. And with the advent of the digital age, currencies around the world are now digits in a global banking database. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, now, I played that video to immediately address some concerns. Okay, um, for those of you that want to watch the, to the end of the video, I just shared it on the chat. You can go and watch it later. Um, now, one of the first things I want to um, bring out from this video is that as far back as the 1999, the, the Nobel Prize winner actually pointed out that the internet itself was the beginning of the next um, digital revolution. Now, the only thing people could not do on the internet was actually do business. Um, the internet made the world a global village, okay? But people could not do business directly over the internet because of there was no way to establish trust. Now, let me explain. Um, on the the internet made it possible for me to, you know, take a picture of you. Let's say I take a picture of you and I can send you a copy of that picture via an email or uh, via Bluetooth or whatever means. Okay. And you can get a copy of that, that picture. But imagine that was money. Imagine I sent you a hundred dollars and I still had a hundred dollars. That wouldn't make sense. Right. That's why the internet could not power, could not power money. Okay. By itself. You know, um, it doesn't make sense. So that's, it's called the double spend problem. It doesn't make sense to be able to spend the same amount twice. Okay. So that's why the internet could not solve that problem. That's why you needed banks. So banks, um, especially if you look at the Nigerian system, for those of you that are in Nigeria here, we have someone called the NIBSS, the NIPS. And those guys are the people that balance transactions. So if I send you money from my bank to your bank, they are the ones that now um, perform the accounting of, you know, debiting account and crediting this account, okay? Now, there was no such um, accounting software on the internet until the blockchain came. So the simplest way I can explain um, the blockchain and Bitcoin to you is that blockchain is more or less the accounting system built on the internet. So the blockchain has made it possible for us to establish trust. So the, with, with, the, with the help of the blockchain, I can send you value from here to wherever you are, without any third party, the same way I will send you an email. So see Bitcoin as sending gold over an email. I'm just getting your address and I'm sending it to you directly. Now, why is it so important? Why is it so important? Let me just go through the slide here. Now, why cryptocurrency are important is because it represents something that has never existed before. One of the biggest challenges we had with the current monetary system, which you saw the history how you know, um, there was a gold standard that was created of $35 per gold. And then, um, and then um, um, President Nixon at some point just decided to, you know, um, to temporarily disconnect the, the gold standard. And because of that, fiat money was created. So right now, the only reason why your Naira is valuable is because the government says it's valuable. So it's the gov government that backs the Naira. So I see a lot of people ask, you know, what backs Bitcoin? So let's even start with what we know already, what, the fiat currency we know already. What backs fiat? Now, what backs Naira or um, uh, um, any other currency around the world is the government, right? So it means that, God forbid, anything happens to the government, let's say there's a civil war or whatever, what happens immediately is that that currency just crashes. Okay? Why? Because it is backed by what? The government. Now, let's take a look at Bitcoin. What makes Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency valuable? Um, the same thing that makes gold valuable. Gold is backed by belief. Gold is backed by scarcity and the fact that it has utility, intrinsic value. Okay. Now, the same thing applies to what money has always been. When money was created, there was no need for um, money never had a country. There was no need for any country to say, this is my country's currency and that's my country. Because money was universal. I could send, I could take a gold ounce here and take it to any other, current, any other country and a gold coin is still a gold coin. Okay? But once um, the, the, the new monetary system started, what you observed is that now money had a country. Okay? So it means that the policies that Nigeria or South Africa 
would, would create for their monetary system would directly affect the people. So the government controlled money. And then you had things called inflation. You heard about deflation. You heard about all those, you know, monetary terms. And then you, for instance, in Nigeria, if you look at it, in 2011, you see that one, um, the minimum wage in 2011 was 18,000 naira. Now, 18,000 naira was equal to, um, I think, $100 at 180 per dollar. Okay. Now, minimum wage is 30,000 naira. And dollar is around, I think, 430 or 20. And you see that brings us to around $70 per, 70 naira per, 70 um, dollar per, per, per minimum wage. So it means that everybody is earning 70 naira as a minimum, $70 as a minimum wage in Nigeria. Now, why is that significant? It means that people are earning less today than they were, you know, nine years ago. Now, people that do not understand money would not see that. Okay, that's one of the first things you must realize that the current monetary system, first of all, is is very flawed. That's number one. Now, Bitcoin was created to separate money from states. Okay, it was created to separate money from states. And then um, one of the things that people re- um, have always mis mis um, understood is that digital currencies are not are not new. Okay, and I know this is shocking to many people. Digital currencies did not just start with Bitcoin. Before Bitcoin, you had your bank app and you could actually send money from, from one place to another. Okay, That's a form of digital currency. Now, cryptocurrencies are a form of digital currencies. Cryptocurrencies, why they are so significant is because of their very nature themselves. They are cryptographically protected. Okay, So it means that every, every cryptocurrency is actually unique. So unlike, unlike um, you, you see with... Um, Naira and, and and the dollar, for instance, with cryptocurrency, it is it is each of them is unique in the sense that each of them is actually um, cryptographically um, built. So if you look at it, you see that let's say I send you one Bitcoin, okay. One of the biggest advantages is that every everybody using Bitcoin or every node would at the same time hear that I have sent you that Bitcoin. So in that way, trust is established. So let's say I'm sending you money from here to, to South Africa and you give me your Bitcoin address. I would not need to ask you for your bank. I would not need to ask you for your, your name. I would not need to ask you for your zip code or whatever. I would just ask you for your Bitcoin address. And once I open my app and I send you that Bitcoin, instantly you get the Bitcoin in South Africa. And you can use that Bitcoin to convert it to ZA and, and purchase whatever you want to purchase over there in South Africa. And one of the biggest things is that this solves permanently the, pro- the problem of, of cross-border payments, okay? One of the biggest industries that has been affected by cryptocurrencies are cross-border payments, okay? Typically, bank transfers cost around, you know, um, 1% or um, uh, 7% of the transfer fee. So if I'm sending money from here to, let's say, um, China, for instance, I'll be spending a lot of money. For those of us that have cousins and brothers outside the country uh, in diaspora, we we receive money via maybe Western Union, MoneyGram, PayPal, and the rest. Okay. Now in Nigeria, where uh, um, um, is one of the biggest, has one of the biggest demands for global remittances, you see that it costs. I think it costs the most to send money to Africa than any other part of the world. And specifically, for instance, in Nigeria or South Africa you see that someone is spending as high as 12% or 10% of the money to send money to you. So someone sends you $100 and the person has to send it through Western Union. Why? Because of there has to be a third party, right? So the third party now brings the money to you in your country and that person charges you a percentage. Now, with Bitcoin, this is what happens. I can send money directly from myself to you or your uncle or your aunties can send you money from wherever they are directly into your Bitcoin wallet for next to zero fees. Okay. Now, did you know that actually early this year someone sent one billion naira, one billion dollars for less than zero point four five dollars? So this is actually uh, one of this is one of the biggest advantages of, of 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 the blockchain. Okay. Everything is open. I can I can unlike the naira and the dollar. If I send you money, the only way you can prove that you did not receive that money 
is maybe you bring your bank statements and I then bring my bank statement and then we now say, oh, okay, this person didn't receive. Why? Because our banks act as the third parties, okay? Now, but in cryptocurrencies, every transaction is, is publicly verifiable, okay? So it means that I can verify if someone actually sends someone money just by getting the transaction ID. With and if I have your Bitcoin address, I can track all the all the all the transactions that have gone through that address. Now, if you look at these addresses, you won't see anything like um, um, Emmanuel here or Tanya here. You just see that this address sends money to this address. Now, see right now the money is let's say a billion dollars, and the person spent zero point five dollars in fees to move this money. Now, imagine this was sent through, for instance, Western Union. There are several challenges you hear. You will hear um, challenges of, you know, um, first of all, the number of days it takes to send. Second of all, the, the, there's a lot of questions about, you know, moving that uh, amount of money. So the, the key thing is in cryptocurrency, everything is open and everything is transparent. So there are a lot of big disadvantages that Bitcoin has um, over the fiat money. And I'll just share some of that very, very briefly. Okay, so now these are some advantages of Bitcoin over fiat. Um, one of the things you already know is that fiat money is centralized. It's controlled by government. It is not scarce. And that's, a, that's the reason why inflation happens. Inflation happens when there's excess money in supply, right? So you see, the, um, recently, especially during the COVID-19, you see the US printed billions of dollars. Now, the, the, during the financial crisis of 2008, they spent less than that you know, to bail out banks and the rest. And, and yet, there was so much trouble. In fact, that was the reason why Bitcoin was created. And now you can imagine what is going to happen in the next 10 years from the effect of what just happened over the past few months. Okay? So it is controlled by government. It is not scarce. It is unlimited in supply. And that's why the value will keep going down and down. That's why the value of Bitcoin, of Naira, uh, um, 10 years ago, and the value of Naira today is, is just getting worse by the day. Why? Because of inflation, okay? And then there's chargebacks. Chargebacks means I pay for something and then the person goes around and just goes maybe to lie or to say that he didn't get value and then the money will be sent back to the person, okay? And it is generally inefficient. Now, Bitcoin, on the other hand, is decentralized, meaning that it is not owned or controlled by any party. Some people ask, why, why since Bitcoin is online, they can hack it. Well, the reason why Bitcoin cannot be hacked is because it is decentralized. There is no single point of failure. It means that even if you want to hack it, where would you hack? There is no points for you to hack. That's the easiest way I can explain that. And then there is peer-to-peer. -peer. Okay, it means that I am sending the money directly from me to you without involving any third party in that deal. Now, Bitcoin is also scarce. Now, there are only 21 million Bitcoin that can possibly exist. I like to play around and say, that if you share all the Bitcoin that can possibly exist, which is 21 million, for everybody in Lagos, it will not go around. Why? That's how scarce it is. So because it is scarce, the value will continue to go up over time. Why? Because it is, imagine, uh, when, when there is then there's limited supply, there will be high demand. It's just a simple uh, principle of economics. And then it's, it's, it has a controlled and limited supply. So it means that there is a particular amount of Bitcoin that is already programmed to be mined every 10 minutes so recently we just had the bitcoin halving before the bitcoin halving every 10 minutes 12.5 bitcoins are produced by the miners now the miners are the people that verify transaction imagine you walk into a bank and you make a deposit there's somebody there that will actually post the transaction just see miners as those guys they are the ones that actually put transactions into blocks and confirm those blocks okay and then um, bitcoin transactions are irreversible once confirmed. Now, it means that if I send you that money, you can never, ever, ever, ever get it back except I send it back to you. So you, there's nobody to go and report to that, ah, you know, I sent it to a wrong address. You know, so there are a lot of, it, is, it calls for a lot of responsibilities, even for you as, as a user. Why? Because you are in charge of your own security. There is no, there is no, there is no, um, there is no CEO of Bitcoin. You know, in Nigeria, we had one that the CEO of Bitcoin is dead. That doesn't happen, okay? So this is very important for you to know. And it is fast and cheap. I had already highlighted that. And it is censorship resistant. Now, this is very important. For those of us in Nigeria, 
we know that you know generally there's a lot of you know negative perception around the world about Nigerians, and so you see some some companies you know blacklist and not allow Nigerians to have access to some financial tools, and then you have let's say on uh, recently you're seeing a lot of issues about censorship on social media platforms. You're seeing a lot of things going around now with cryptocurrency. There is no such censorship. Okay, it means that I can send money to literally anyone in the world without being asked any question. That's basically what it means. It means you can do whatever you like, actually, you know? Um, so that is that is um, that about Bitcoin. Now, let me just um, explain something else quickly. I'll just say something about blockchain, okay? Now, blockchain is, as I said earlier, the, 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 the software or the technology that powers Bitcoin. Now, blockchain is what makes it possible for the internet today to be able to do that accounting that I said you couldn't do before. It's what makes it possible for, with the help of blockchain, if I take that picture of you and I send it to you, I don't have a copy anymore. So I, it's just like I move the, the, the picture from my account to your account and I cannot get it back, okay? So blockchain is a new way of storing and validating data, okay? It's a decentralized, persistent, transparent, distributed, and append-only ledger. It means that you can only add data there, you cannot remove, it is distributed, it is persistent, and it is continuous. Okay? Now, I want you to see a blockchain in simple terms as this. Imagine a Google Doc, okay? A Google document that is being shared. If you use Google Docs here a lot, you understand. Now, Google Docs, I can share a link with you, and you can also edit while I edit, okay? Now, imagine a Google Doc where everyone just has comments, commenting privileges. You can only suggest, okay? And then only... Only comments with 51%, like majority support, would get, you know, um, um, put into the sheet. That's like an easy way of explaining what blockchain is. Now, just know that the blockchain is a chain of blocks that is used, is the way of storing data. Instead of storing, let's say, one, on, one to 100 in a, in a series, the same way we do normally in the typical database. For those of you that are developers here, you use maybe Oracle, MySQL, and the rest. You know, blockchain, blockchain is a form of, you know, um, storing data. And it's a, it's a new logic that you have to learn. And if you learn that logic, how to store data in a blockchain, then you have become a blockchain developer in simple terms. Okay. So I think this is um, all I have time to say. And um, for more information, there are several videos we've done in our previous masterclasses focused on the basics. I just tried to rush through as much as I can to cover as many areas as I can in the most, in the easiest way possible. So um, as we keep having questions on this topic, I'll be in the uh, Q&A session answering those questions as much as possible. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dami. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you for um, that session. Okay, so we're going to go into two things. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce our second media partner who can't be here with us today. Um, thank you to Bitcoin KE for their support. So Bitcoin KE is an African blockchain and crypto media outlet. They're based out of Nairobi, Kenya, and they're pushing for education, awareness, and adoption of cryptocurrencies and blockchain on the continent. Uh, we work with them a few times, and they've been great supporters of crypto education. And um, Bitcoin KE reports on news and covers events on crypto and blockchain across the continent with interviews and industry thought leaders. And you can check out their work on their website by visiting www.bitcoin.com ke.io. I'll share their link in the chat function if you want to check out the website. Um, so thank you to Bitcoin KE, Global Crypto, and Lightblocks for being our media partners. So now we're going to go into the second giveaway. Um, I'm going to share in just one second um, the link to the Google form for you to answer questions. Two questions need to be answered correctly for you to be selected um, as the winner. The first five people who answer correctly will be selected by my colleague, um, Derek. Is Derek still on the call? Yeah, I'm here. I'm waiting to Great, great, out. great. So um, let me just send the let me just send the giveaway form for the second um, giveaway. Are you going to be sharing um, the winners of the first one? Yes, I will. I will be sharing the winner for the first one. Okay. Okay, everyone, please look at the chat chat function for the giveaway form. Um, if you answer the questions correctly, 
you will be selected as the winner by Derek. Derek, please take it away. Please um, tell us who the winners are from the first session. Um, uh, please, Emma, can you give me rights to share my screen? Sure. Um, Rafa needs to mute, by the way. Um, I hope you all can see my screen. Yes, we can. Lovely. So the first question was for us to select uh, all the African currencies that are supported on Binance P2P. Uh, the correct answer is the Nigerian Naira, the, the Rand, uh, the South African Rand, and the Kenyan Shilling. So the winner for that session, the winners for that session will be Sorry. Yep, we only have one winner. Uh, Mark is the winner for the first question. Uh, we will be sending your rewards uh, through your BNB Binance ID. The second question was, what is the current? What are the current fees for Binance P2P? And the answer is zero. We are not charging fees at the moment. Uh, Mark is yep. the only person who answered the question correctly. So people, we only have three currencies that we currently support on, on our P2P, and that is the Nigerian Naira, the South African Rand, and then the Kenyan Shilling. That's it from me, Dami. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone, I shared the form um, for the second giveaway, which will be based on Emmanuel's presentation. I'm gonna share it again. Um, please answer correctly. Um, and then in the next, after our next speaker, we'll be sharing the winners for that session as well. Okay, so um, I would like everyone who is in speaking to please be muted because there's been some feedback. So Rafa, please mute. Um, okay, everyone, the second giveaway form, I've shared this again um, in the chat function. Okay, so I'd like to reintroduce again Chris Annie, who is our guest speaker for today. Chris Annie is the CEO of Digital Abundance, um, and he's going to be talking to us on the topic of the hour, how to become a profitable crypto trader. Is Chris online? I can't see. I can't see him anymore. Yes, he is. Chris. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Yes. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Okay. So it's my session now. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone from here in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, to be specific. Screen. Okay, perfect. Here's my presentation. Okay. So, here we go. Okay, fine. So, can you all see my screen right now? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, so my name is Chris Annie, and today, uh, this is the last session. Um, Tanya, good work. Uh, Dami, Derek, and um, Emmanuel Babalola, my very good friend. Uh, so uh, we're going to start right profitable trader. In this session, I will go a bit, I'll do some fundamentals, and I'll do some a bit technical, not so technical. But I believe that um, if you learn what we're about to teach or what I'm about to share with you, it will give you a guide, a clue to trade cryptocurrency. So I want to see in the comment session, uh, uh, I, I'm, going to be I'm going to be teaching and I'm going to make sure you're also following me in the comment session because I'll be throwing up questions and all that. So I'm Chris Annie. You can search on me on YouTube, on Facebook, just search Chris Annie and on Twitter. 
I am Chris Ali. So who is this guy? I'm a teacher, I'm an author. They've introduced me as the founder of the first education platform in Africa for Bitcoin, blockchain, and cryptocurrency education, uh, CryptoHub.club. And I'm also the author of Crypto 101 and um, Crypto Money Bondu, a compilation of videos and ebook that help people to learn about Bitcoin, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and um, how to trade, how to invest, and how to profit from the market, okay? Uh, so the next, um, so this is what we're going to cover in this session. What do you need to know to become a profitable trader? What are the things you need to know to become a profitable trader? All right. So uh, once again, I want to thank Binance for this opportunity. Uh, I came into the blockchain space or the Bitcoin space 2016. Then Binance wasn't existing, but CZ was doing a lot of stuff on the ground. And um, I started with a uh, capital of 200,000. I bought my first Bitcoin when Bitcoin was almost 600 US dollars. And one of the things cryptocurrency has done for me is financial freedom. You know what it means like to have dreams and there's no money to finance it. And that's why in this session, I want you guys to take this serious. Um, one of the things, one of the exchanges we're using back then used to be Polonia X and all those things. And 2017, uh, Binance came in and 2018, they changed the game. Like Binance came and changed the game. Simplified trading, uh, IUs and ICUs. In short, I remember one of my major, one of my top profits in the ICU or the IU games was in Binance. Uh, there were times when I had some trades that did 10x, 600%. You know, we just come there and Binance made it so easy. So you guys should also be thanking Binance on Twitter when you go on Twitter and tell them thank you for this session because you cannot bring Chris and me for a session like this if, if you're not paying me that heavy. But you guys should thank Binance for this. Okay, so the first thing first you need to know concerning cryptocurrency, if you want to become a trader, is to understand the crypto market and how to use Binance Exchange. Okay, so in this uh, session, I'll quickly go to my Binance account. Okay, so let's just look at Binance from, I know they've explained, all, so I'm not going to be doing all the, explain about what Binance is as a company. I'm going to look at the trading platform. If you're here and you don't have, a Binance account. I'm sure uh, the team will drop in their referral link or so for you to have one. So I'm, I sh I'm sure everyone here uh, has a Binance account. If you don't have, make sure you open. Binance is the simplest exchange to use. It's not a paid promotion. It's actually true. Okay. And it's one of the major ones I use. Okay. Uh, so if you come here, you can see the entire market. And Binance improves like almost every three, four months. Next month, you can come and see a new development because when when we start there, we did not see things like easy to buy. Uh, you can put up 1,000 USD here, and you can buy Bitcoin straight once you verify your account. So let's look at certain things now. You, you want to see your, 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 your browser. Binance. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me use my desktop screen. Okay. Okay, perfect. How is it now? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so this is the entire Binance. Just when you come in, this is Binance. And um, this place tells you how the big the Binance ecosystem is, exchange and all that. Our focus is on the exchange. Here you can buy crypto, P2P, third party, and markets, or derivative and all that. Please, if you're a new trader, leave derivative for now. Just this is where you're focused on, okay? The basic, you can use your basic interface the advanced interface, the OTC interface, P2P interface. So I love using the advanced interface. It's actually very cool for me. Uh, it's not as if it's for advanced trader. It's just what you choose, okay? Uh, so over here, you will see the market, what's happening. The last price, the change, 24-hour change, okay? What's happening in Binance? This, this year shows that the last price, last price of BNB, BNB is a native token of Binance, their own coin just like what Naira is to Nigeria. That's what BNB is to Binance, okay? So this is them showing you that in the past 24 hours, Binance as a coin, BNB has gained 3%. Bitcoin has gained in the past 24 hours, 1.46%. Ethereum has gained 7%. Ripple has gained 2%. BCH has gained this amount, 
Okay, uh, that's my screen touching there. Okay, so um, what again are you supposed to know? You can even come here to view more markets. You can view the entire market here. Okay, so this is one that concerns us. Leave all that ones for now. You can actually learn those things yourself too. Now, when you come to the Binance market, you can trade BNB for some other altcoin. You can trade Bitcoin. You can trade altcoin market. So I'm going to just focus on the Bitcoin market. Okay. So I look at what's going on in the market. There's a particular coin I told my group to buy two months ago and just for short time trade, you know. And this is the coin, Cardano. We bought this coin when it was somewhere around 500 Satoshi, for something to 500 Satoshi. Okay, and um, uh, and this is where we are now. So this is basic. When you say basic, if you want to look at the trading platform now, I choose basic here. So you can actually still change it. Uh, you can come here, click on spots. I like advanced. Advanced gives me a broader view or a kind of sleeky platform that buy. So it's just your choice. I'm not saying this is the best one to use. It's actually your choice. This is my own choice. Okay. Now, there are things you should also know if you are going to start trading. Number one, Binance has made it easy that Binance has their original trading charts. They also incorporate trading view. Okay, now if you notice, trading view has some paid subscription, but Binance has actually incorporated some things you can actually use for free on their platform. Okay, but see, let me let me give you one, let me give you one, um, let me give you one uh, uh, insight. Don't bother yourself so much about whether you're using trading view. If even when I do my trade, I don't come here to do the analysis, I just still do the little one. Binance has made it easy, like simple, simple, easy. So you come here, these things you see here, they are called time frames. Okay, these are time frames. One minute, three minutes, five minutes, 30 minutes. These are time frames, one hour, two hour, six. I'm gonna show you the importance of some of these things. Uh, this is also one day. So if I want to look at Bitcoin chart, this is Bitcoin chart live. And I'll look at Bitcoin chart on a four hour time frame. What is this thing showing me? These things that you see, they are called candlesticks. Okay, they are called candlesticks. This thing means that this stick you're seeing here, this red shows people are selling. This green here signifies buy. Okay, I don't. Know, I'm not going to go into details because today I'm going to teach you as a simple, as simple as ABC. I don't want to complicate you with big trading terms, so that you just know. I, I can go deep and start telling you this is the open, this is the close. No. It's not what we came here to do. We're going to just see it in simple ways you can actually uh, become a profitable trader. So let's look at this. So these are the candlesticks. And um, this year shows the activity of the market every four hours. If you look at this is four hours. Come here, four hours, four hours, four hours, four hours, like that. That's what it means here, four hours. Okay. Um, this year also signifies indicators. I'm going to show you essential indicators that you can actually use to trade. I'm going to teach it here. You can see me, I'm even on two already. So I can close them. I can, this is MACD, RSI, different ones like that. Now I'm also going to do a live, a live demonstration. Okay. I buy Bitcoin almost every day. I buy, I sell, I buy, uh, and I trade too. Okay. Now, I have about 13, I have, I have about three Binance exchange I use for my own person, for some reasons, personal, uh, some others and like that, like that. Okay, there are those I just keep and I keep my long-term coins there and I don't touch it. So this is one of my trading accounts. Okay, so let's do a presentation now or let's do a demonstration. I know you want to see how do you buy and sell on Binance. It's as easy. Uh, let's say... Uh, let me use an altcoin for instance. Let me use an altcoin for instance. Let's say I want to buy a coin called BAT. Okay. Uh, Binance makes it so easy. So you come here to your search engine. You click on BAT. Okay. Once you type BAT, BAT is out. Okay. I have some Bitcoin. I want to buy, let's say, 0 0.001 of, uh, for BAT. This is one, I'm holding this coin. Okay. Uh, so let's say I want to buy BAT. Uh, I could just look for, let me, let me look at, let's say, um, 0.02, uh, this thing for BAT. 
if you come here, it's about um, uh, if you come to Bitcoin dot dot io, what's that site again that shows you how easy it is to uh, sorry. Sorry, please uh, let me check this. Yeah, this is what I was looking for. Okay, so what's 0 0.002? You can just do a Bitcoin calculator here, 0 0.002, okay? It's easy, you can even buy $100 worth of whatever coin, $50. Uh, but okay, let me do for $200, that's all for 190. So I'm buying bat worth almost 0 0.02, right? If I'm correct, 0 0.02. Okay, that's about 190 point something dollars. So there's something called buy on the spot and buy on market. Meaning this is, if I want to buy at my own price, the current market price of BAT is 2,264 Satoshi. That's 0 0.002 and all that. Now, if I want to buy immediately, Binance makes it easy. I just click on the market and I can put the amount of BAT I want to buy, 1,000 BAT, okay? Once I put that amount of 1,000 BAT, it will buy instant. Look at it. Instant. This is what just happened now. Instant. Instant. I added new bat. Instant. If you want to now buy limits, this one means I'm waiting for Binance. I'm waiting for BAT to come to maybe 2250. There's, like, there's something I teach in my academy. It's called Satoshi Value. You must know how to use Satoshi Value. You're reading all these things. It means that I, I, once I place my buy, once I place my buy here, BAT has to come to 2250 for me to buy. For me, for my order to be executed. So you see it here, yeah? 225. The limit is here already. I can cancel this. So uh, if you even check on Binance website, you see more ways how these things are done. But that's one of the things I'm going to show you. I'm seeing some questions saying, hey, how do you set stop loss? She lags. She I know that, like Babalola said, one hour isn't enough to even teach all these things, but I'm going to do my best to deliver top-notch value because I know a lot of you are asking for answers and I'm going to really touch something, even though we can't, we can't teach everything on trading in the next 50 minutes or 40 minutes that I have. So I can cancel this order now. Okay, I'm good. Let's look at other things you need to know. Um, you must also know how to use what we call the coin market cap. Every trader must know how to use the coin market cap. Coin market cap is coinmarketcap.com. Binance also has that on their platform, Binance.info. Okay, but I also use coin market cap. Learn to combine those different tools. Um, what's the next thing I'm to teach? Fine. So we've, we we know that now. Time frame indicators, how to set your stop loss. I'm going to teach that. The next thing, understand technical indicators. I won't go so deep with this one because I'm going to teach you as though I'm teaching a market woman what trading is. So what are trading indicators? Those things I showed you, I say RSI, MACD, and all those things. Those are what they call indicators. Now, those indicators, they are trying to show you that, ah, okay, this market now, eh, Bitcoin, now $9,500. But it gets some indicators, what will we use? Take no, say Bitcoin if we enter 9,006. I'm speaking broken now. For my South African friends and those, it means what I'm saying is uh, those indicators, they are actually tools I can use to look at the market, the previous performance in the market. And when I look at those previous performance in the market, okay, I can now say, ah, oh, Bitcoin, nah, 9,000 yesterday or past two, three months. Okay, Bitcoin uh, 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 Okay, Bitcoin uh, this social amount, this social social amount. Okay, uh, hello guys, please ignore those charts. These things. So Nigerians intentionally want to provoke people in the chat. This is not a paid class. Somebody is saying I should show all my track record. I've made many millionaires in this platform. <laughs> okay, so. This is because of Binance. I'm quickly doing it. This is supposed to be a paid class, okay? But for Binance's sake, okay? So those technical indicators are what I'll say, ah, 
The market Bitcoin was nine thousand last week. Last two weeks it was uh, nine thousand three. So based on all this way Bitcoin has been moving for fifty days now, and we are we are going to use this indicator to know that ah, Bitcoin can now go from this price to this next price. So that's what technical indicators do. Okay, they are used by traders, investors. The indicators make it easier to identify patterns and spots where you can buy and where you can sell. Okay, where you can buy and where you can sell. Okay, some indicators you need to know. Some indicators you need to know. Number one, relative strength index. Relative strength index. Okay, relative strength index. Now, in relative strength index, in relative strength index, uh, this is where relative strength index is. Okay, this is the this is the indicator here. So, what is this indicator saying? It is saying it is a technical indicator used in the analysis of financial market. It is used to indicate the current strength or weakness of a coin market of the coin that's a crypto market based on the closing price before okay and now we are looking at the new price now meaning if i come here now i look at our ah, bitcoin price already closing at this rate and the new one now is now at okay so this is back sorry and it's at two two six one what's this thing showing me i will show you one picture and that picture should be able to show you or tell you whether you should buy this coin or whether you should keep it or whether you should sell it. This is what we keep asking, uh, signal, signal, signal. That's why a lot of people don't know uh, 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 trading because you're actually not looking for the process. You're actually looking for immediate results. And that's one of the reasons why some people fail. So look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this um, picture. Over, I'm going to ask questions, and they're going to give give away for those who are going to ask us. Okay, who are going to answer right? So look at this: overbought, oversold. I go break them down for pigeon now. Now it means say uh, if this coin day here, people don't sell the coin tire. Now the price of the coin don't go down. It means they uh, don't oversold. It has they don't they don't sell sell. You know when you buy a commodity now. And you keep on, you keep on selling out, selling out, selling out, selling out. At the time, demand will be lesser. Please mute that person who's making that. You know. The demand will be lesser than the supply. Meaning, when supply don't too much, or when the supply is too much, what's the next thing that will happen? The price will go down. That's what happens in the market. It means we don't they sell yam, 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 yam. Everybody, is, everybody, this yam has been sold out. Like it has been oversold. The price is going down. We have more demand, we have more supply than demand. The next thing that happens is oversold. Now, at the oversold level, remember in the market when somebody buy and that person sell it. So since this thing has been oversold, it means this price is not a good point for us to now bring money and buy. Okay? This is time to bring in money and buy. Okay? This is time to now take in the money and buy. Uh, I'm seeing something. Okay, 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 okay. So they said I should reduce my pigeon English. Okay, uh, so let's go to the next one. The next one, moving average. Moving average helps you to smooth out price action by filtering, uh, by filtering out the market noise and highlighting the direction of the trend as based on past price. Let's look at on that one. This, this is something. This is what they call moving average on Binance. This is where it is. Moving average, ma. If you come on Trading View, you can just come here and type moving average on trading view, it will come out, okay? Uh, that's moving average. That's another indicator you've got to know. Now, when we teach something like this, you should also learn to do your own research and go and expand more, okay? Uh, the next, the next, the next indicator you should know, 
uh, MACD. MACD is used to determine the momentum of a coin by showing the relationship between the two moving average. Let me give you one expo for moving average. So many people have been teaching you so many things about moving average. If I want to check the moving average of what I'm selling, okay, let's say I'm a trader now and Bitcoin is 10,000 in March or 10,000 in February, March 8,000, April 7,000. If I want to do an overall month average for what big price will be in May, like a forecast, okay? Though that's not the only indicator I will use. All I need to do is just take the three price of Bitcoin and divide it by three. That's moving average. See, just, it's more technical, but this is a simple way you can understand this thing. Another thing that you need to know is what they call support and resistance, okay? Support and resistance. Support are used by traders refer to price levels where an asset can be pushed into a certain direction. Now, I'll use one picture to show you what support and resistance is. That's why when I look at a chart like this, I can say, ah, this is support. This is support. This is support. And I can come here and say resistance is 2344. Let me show you something, guys. Do you know that with support and resistance, I can be able to predict a certain way places I am supposed to sell a coin when I buy. For instance, now that I've bought at 2263, okay, based on support and resistance, I can now look at 2344 as my uh, take profit zone. I'm just giving you that as an example. Of course, before you buy and sell, you need to combine different, different indicators. I use about three indicators before I sell or before I buy, make a buy or sell decision. Okay, next. So a picture like this shows you what support is. A picture like this shows you where resistance is. Write this down. This is for paid class, but let's write this down. Resistance zone are selling zones. Support zones are buying zones. Okay, resistance zones are selling zones. Support zones are buying zone. Uh, okay, uh, next. Next, another thing you need to learn are trading strategies. A trading strategy is a fixed plan that is designed to achieve a profitable return by going long or short in the market, meaning buy or sell in the market. Simple, long is buy, short is sell. Okay, that's a trading. So what's your trading strategy? For every trading strategy, one needs to define the crypto to trade, the entry level and money management rule. Hey guys, it is possible that more than 50% of you who are watching me live know how to trade. You can buy and sell, okay? You can you even know how to spot profitable trades, but you may be failing here. Yeah. How do you formulate your trading plan? Let me tell you what I do. See my notes, see these notes, see these notes. See these notes? I have records. In short, I have a book. I can actually show you a note, uh, some of my trades for 2018. Many of you want to become profitable trader, but you don't have a notebook. You, you just rely on make I buy, make I sell. Then when you finish buying and selling, you behave like these newbies who come into Forex or crypto market. Once they buy and maybe they buy Bitcoin and they bought Bitcoin at 9,000 and it gets to 9,500, you start seeing them posting on the charts, posting on their WhatsApp status. Hey, my name, they'll even change their name. My name is now Ima FX. My name is now Temi FX. Hey, stop that. You are posting on WhatsApp status. You are posting on Facebook, yet you don't even have a diary where you are posting your records. To, I can show you the trades I did. I can show you the trades I did 2018. I'm telling you, you don't have a trading record and you want to become a profitable trader. You have bad management principles. I saw a guy today said uh, on Facebook, he was telling a forex trader that he bought, he, he, he grew an account from $760 to $1,007. I don't trade forex. I, I prefer crypto. Crypto is the sweetest. And, and as he got to 1007 boy, Guess what? He blew that 1,007. You know why? Because he had no more, he had no management principle. Okay? Don't be among those. You just you just made $500. Boom. Your name has changed. Your Facebook name has changed. Your WhatsApp status changed. 
Next thing, you're opening trading group, telling people, come, let me teach you. Teach you what? You don't know anything. Thrive in this game. I've been trading since 2016. So common trading strategies, day trading, as it sounds, you are not, you are not going to leave the position more than one day. Meaning you can buy the coin now and in 24 hours, you make sure you sell, whether it's profit or, 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 or loss, according to you. Next is position trading. Like this, like this coin called BAT. Okay. Let me show you something. This coin called BAT. Okay. Let me, this coin called BAT. I called this coin. I said, we bought this coin since Wednesday in my trading group. We bought this coin since Wednesday. I told my group, man, let's buy this coin. And that was Wednesday. Okay. Uh, so I took a position buying this coin. This is it. I took a position as at, as uh, Wednesday. Today is Saturday. I, I, I put a position. I said, buy at this, sell at this position. Okay? Uh, and that is it. I did that. I am not day trading. What I'm actually doing is simple. I am holding a position on BAT. So you can see my BAT position. I've been holding from 2,200 till 2270 because i know what i want to do with this coin so i'm holding based i'm, I'm, I'm holding a position okay next next uh is swing trading when a trend swing traders are those who there's usually some price volatility and uh they buy or set sell at now swing traders depend on what they call volatility meaning if if i buy now boom, you know for a short term, very short term, that's what they are doing, swing traders. Then there are those who are scalpers. Scalpers are like, scalpers can come and say, ah, they, they are looking at 2270, right? If this thing just gets to 228, I'll sell it. Maybe they are looking for things like 1%, 2%, 3%, that's scalping. One, 0. something percent, as long as it is bigger than any transaction fee, okay? Is bigger than any transaction free you are using. Okay. Uh, so that is that. Next, I hope my screen is still showing. I hope my screen is still showing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, good. So next thing is risk management and portfolio management. Risk management and portfolio management. I want to ask you a question, you that you are trading. How many percent of your money is, is on altcoin? I have a personal, I have a personal law that no more than 40% of my money goes on altcoin. The rest can go on Bitcoin and Delta. And I have a reason for it. I must make sure I have certain amount of money in Delta. So I be done to my, my buy order unit. Same thing for BTC. Sometimes I can even reduce my BTC this thing to as low as 30, then increase it. It's called portfolio management. What is risk management? Risk management helps you to cut down losses. Many of you know technical indicators. Many of you can buy. Many of you even know. In short, as I'm talking, it's possible. So many of you are here even know technical analysis more than me. There's a place I have learned and I've mastered the game is in risk management. And that's why Binance has made it possible. When I buy a coin, I can set my stop loss. This is I'm teaching, it's supposed to be paid, but no problem. When I buy a coin, I can set my stop loss and take profit at the same time. Let me show you something. Now, I want to buy BAT again. Okay, this is me buying BAT. Okay, uh, so I, bought, I want to buy BAT. Okay, remember I bought BAT at, so let's go to the other history. I bought some BAT at two. 226 right so i want to use based on uh i want to use based on the stop loss i have been able to set i've been able to i've been able to i want to have set so let's look at something like uh the one th the same 1000 baht this is how to set ocu ocu is saying chris okay we're going to sell at a certain amount so let's say that same bat I bought at 226, okay? Uh, I want to sell that same bat at 23. Or 
let me use at 26 okay at 26 okay uh, next is that the same bat i want to put a stop loss maybe 10 percent stop loss let's look at what 10 10 percent will be around two two thousand okay and i just use one satoshi difference and i put this 1000 baht okay the same 1000 baht this is how to set stop loss stop loss and take profit at the same time so when i click it boom you see it you see what has happened on my uh uh this thing uh uh you see what has happened to my exchange okay immediately two orders have been created what is this showing okay number one if my if my bat comes to 2006 first it will sell off i take my profit if my bat hits 2000 stop loss i take my loss there is something we teach in risk management and it is called one percent rule the one percent rule is saying if i trade with let's say a portfolio of ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars each of the trade i make i should not lose more than one percent so sometimes i have a trading rule for stop loss that i set sometimes depending on my trade i can let's say for instance that i bought some bit i bought in the past 24 hours i bought over twelve thousand dollar worth of bitcoin into my wallet and immediately i bought the coin guess what i did I set my stop loss. Anything that makes Bitcoin go below 9.4 exits, I set it on USD Theta. I put it on USD Theta. If you want to trade Bitcoin, you can even trade Bitcoin for Naira. You can trade Bitcoin for whatever currency, South African currency, uh, uh, and all that. You can use Theta. Some of you say Bitcoin price. You say, no, it is easy. There's every pair on Binance. You just go, I set my stop loss. And once I set my stop loss, if Bitcoin goes below 9.5 or 9.4, based on what I do, it may be 1%. Because I want to edge my money, it sells off. I can now come back when Bitcoin gets to 9.1 for me, and I buy again, or 8,000, or the next support, depending on whichever place it's coming to. You want to become a profitable trader, okay? What percentage of profit per trade will you take? And some of you just do it without checking risk management or risk reward ratio. Okay, depending on my goal, depending on my goal, I can set a stop loss between three to fifteen percent. My 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 last bat that I gave to my trading group, the the in short, the 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 stop we set is above thirteen percent, and I have a reason for that, okay? which is personal. So, another thing that will make you a profitable trader is market psychology. This thing comes with your ability to read the market. Let me give you all. A, let me give you all an insight. You won't hear this from everybody who is teaching, who is trying to tell you to trade crypto. You must have a long-term goal if you're going to make money in the crypto market. Ah, the crypto market has helped me. It has given me gain. I've seen losses. I've seen gains. I've seen more gains. And I've learned over time. You must learn to read the market. Sometimes I can stay one hour observing the market without trading. What am I doing? I'm trying to get myself inclined with what's going on in the market. I will even read the news. I will even go on Twitter. I will check what's going on. I will go back and say, oh, oh, okay, this is the price of this coin, social date. This is the price. Okay. And let me tell you something. With observation, your instinct in the market begins to grow. This is for advanced traders. And it comes with insight, foresight. And over time, you now learn how to predict certain moves with no much technical analysis. Traders who want to be profitable must learn to be to must learn to observe and not just observe, they must also be patient. I'll round up with this. I'll round up with this. I'll round up with this. Uh, remember I said earlier that a lot of you actually know how to trade, but yet 
uh, you have certain issues with, I'm looking for this presentation. I'm looking for this. I'm just gonna quickly share some lessons that the market has taught me over the years. What the market has taught me over the years. And uh, maybe about 15 lessons, I'll pick them one, 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 and we end this class or we end this session. Okay, so number one, I'm gonna share this now. Give me two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. I hope you guys are getting something. Please let me see in the comment section. If you're learning something, do let me know. If you're learning something, do let me know. If, do, do let me know. If, if, you're, if you're learning something or you've learned something today, do let me know in the comment section, okay? Do let me know in the comment section. Do let me know in the comment section, okay? So let's go. Um, let, let's go to this. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this is it. Some lessons, I, I may not cover everything because yeah, yeah, yeah. They're giving me this sign. My time is up. Uh, uh, good, good. I love, I love, I love the response I'm getting. I've learned, oh, perfect. It's my first time learning and I've learned a lot. Good. Somebody said, I'm learning a lot. I lost 8,000 euros two days ago. Why would you lose that? Use your stop loss. Use your stop loss. We'll see you, okay? I've learned something. As somebody said, we need to pay for this class. <laughs> okay, good, good. Okay, so every trader, in short, my premium members are the one who get this as one of their lessons. But let me share this. I don't know, maybe it's because I love Binance. That's why I'm doing this for them. Uh, lessons learned from my trading experience so far, from the bull market and the bear market. Binance came when Bitcoin uh, fell from the 19K levels, okay? The 19K levels to 12 and boom to 3,005. Boy, 2018 was one of the biggest lessons I learned in crypto markets. And I can tell you this. I am, I'll write it again. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. I am not the best crypto trader. I am not the best technical analyst, but I'm a profitable trader. My goal is not to know how to predict. My goal is to make money. Did you hear what I said? My goal is to make money from the market, not to say, ah, I am correct or I'm not correct. So let us go. At the end of this class, I'm going to share with you guys my, my contact, okay? For those who want to reach me on Twitter, you can see me. I am Chris Annie on Facebook, Chris Annie. Okay, let me share the free screen. I repeat it again. You will never see me go on Facebook posting charts. I don't do that. My chart is my money. My chart is the money. My chart is that 10% I put when I trade you $5,000 and I get 10%. I carry my $500. That is the thing. But some of you in different countries, South Africa, Uganda, Nigeria, you guys are used to this. Once you make $50, boom, trading group straight. These lessons will help you. It is not about posting charts. It is not about knowing all the technical analysis. It's also about being a profitable trader. Make money, okay? Money is the cocoa. First thing you must know, everyone is a genius in a bull market. Once bull market starts and Bitcoin starts going up, you say, about the, I said it, buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. Let Bitcoin dump now to 5,000. Hey, you start seeing people on their, on their WhatsApp status, putting that man, that man, that those Ghanaian people that used to carry coffee. Ta -ra -ra, ta -ta, ta -ra -ra, ta -ra -ra, it says, you don't know about it. <laughs> it will take your money for vanishing. Boom. That's what it starts seeing. The same people told you to buy you, but the same people now are not telling you, undertaker, undertaker, undertaker. Okay? Everybody's a bull market. Okay? Next, don't be a blind bull. All markets are cyclical. I trade stock recently. And I discovered all these markets are cyclical. Whenever the market goes up, it will definitely come down. You must know this. So don't rush the market. Look at, is it not Bitcoin that is at 9,540? Was it not one time 8,000? Was it not one time at 8,000? Was it not one time at 6,000? Let's even go to one more chart. And you will see, you will see Bitcoin was even at 3,000. This year, Bitcoin fell to 4.5, 4.9, 4, yet it still got back to 10,000. All markets are cyclical, okay? Don't be a blind bull. Don't be chasing, you're buying, you're buying, buying, buying. Next thing, boom, just buy and pass away. 
There's a different next. There's a difference between trade and investment. Some people don't know how to invest. And some people don't know how to trade. If you want to be a trader, you must be consistent in the market. But if you want to be an investor, you are thinking long term. But the trader is thinking how to cash out. Let me give you a clue. If you want to start in the Bitcoin or the crypto market, start as a trader. You can start as a short-term trader. Buy Bitcoin at 6,000. Sell at 9,000. You, you start testing 5%, 10%, how to make those things. That's how you start, okay? That's how you start. Next thing, crypto trading is about buying and selling Bitcoin or crypto assets for short-term profits. Learn to also take profits, okay, with focus on the price. Investing is about, I'm buying at 5,000. I, I, I had a friend of mine who bought uh, 20,000 20, worth of BTC at, when Bitcoin was 5,000 this year. He's, he's, holding over, he's holding about $40,000 worth of Bitcoin now. And he's not thinking of selling it off anytime soon. But yes, all of them are in Theta. Okay, so his money is in Theta now. He has invested. That's for him. Okay, plan your trade. Look at my friend Emmanuel Bolola gave me this diary. This is Binance diary. If before I drop any trading, before I drop a signal in my trading group, I don't have planned my trade inside this diary. I'll look at, I'll calculate. Be like a market woman. Carry that paper. If you are struggling to even record it, then you, are, you will struggle to actually master what trading is. So don't be mentally lazy. Entries are important, but risk management is where you make or lose money. Entries are important, but risk management is where you make or you lose your money. Okay? You can buy Bitcoin at 6,000 and Bitcoin falls to 4,000. And you'll, be in, you, you'll not be in loss like that. Okay? Next, beware of get rich quick folks who are on the crypto bandwagon every year. Those rich folks will come and tell you, see, they'll tell you, I use Binance, I use Binance. I can give you 20% of your money every month. Avoid them. Run, run, run. Those people are war. They are machine. They are in that boski. They will pop, come assault you during prayer time. But now you are looking for your money again. You just be hearing story. Run from those people. Next, number seven. Okay, number seven. Decide which type of trade setup or investment you want to take and ignore everything. Like me, you see this bat. I am holding this bat till 2005 or 2004, except if the market changes, I know what else to do. Okay, next is don't assume just because you've made money in crypto or forex you can come and trade this market if you're a crypto trade or you're a forex trader and you came into crypto okay uh if you are a forex trader for instance and you came into crypto humble yourself oh. humble yourself oh. don't say because i've traded forex uh, bitcoin will just humble you like you just come like this boom just see shock you start settling your matter this weekend in nigeria please Humble yourself. If you're also a crypto trader and you've made money, don't say because I've made money in crypto, I went to Forex. I'm going to start trading Forex. Forex people will settle your matter. Okay? Okay, so have four minutes to go. So, um, okay, so you can't control the market. You, the only thing you can control are your entries, your trade size, and your exit. Okay, don't blindly follow trade alerts from anyone. Especially if one, some of you say social media, boom, trade alerts, just continue with them like that. And I like the crypto market because even if you don't buy today, you can buy tomorrow. Okay, it is a two for seven market. There's something I want to share here. And this has helped cost some people. Does it, when you make some huge amount of money in crypto, don't trade the game for like one week. Don't trade the game. Because if you keep trading, you'll be so excited that you can lose that money and they'll start settling your matter. Okay? Don't invest in a coin you don't understand. There's a coin I'm holding, Tezos. I like the coin. I started buying the coin. So this year, too, I bought at $1.7. I told my group, buy, buy, buy at $1.7. At that, buy at this amount. There's another coin again. My team, they are buying again today. I'm telling them to hold down for the next one month. Okay? Because I understand the coin movement. I understand that this coin is at a crazy insane zone that you can't go down again okay uh, so uh three biggest problem for traders over trading hesitating on entries and closing position prior to profit targets okay the hardest thing to do in trading is nothing there are times when i can look at market and i don't trade because the money where you know, the money you've not traded is also a money you've gained okay I do nothing this can also be the most profitable decisions for you. Cryptocurrency exchanges go down. There's high volatility. 
Okay, so that's why you learn to set your stop loss and all those things, okay? Don't trade money you need for living expenses. It's called risk capital. Some of you say, I want to trade Bitcoin, but the food money that you used to feed yourself one month is what you're using to trade Bitcoin. By the time you enter, you just be like that Ghanaian guy. You don't know about it. It has taken your money for vanishing, especially when you're a new trader and you don't know anything. You just be there watching your market, your coin go down. So, okay, you can make money trading the momentum and hype in shit coins. Next, the last, master the art of taking profit, okay? Master the art of taking profit. Master the art of taking profit. Master the art of taking profit. Now, for those of you who are asking me, because my session is off, uh, on Twitter, you can get me on I am Chris Annie, Facebook, or Chris Annie, and this is my WhatsApp number. Before you leave, avoid, avoid pump and dump group. I know I said this here, but I jumped it. Avoid pump and dump group. Avoid them. See, let me tell you something. By the time they tell you to buy, they've already bought. Okay? Shitcoin, don't, I don't, don't tell me anything about shitcoin, whether shitcoin or no shitcoin. That's not my business. Every, every coin is a coin on its own. Okay? But the thing is, avoid a pump and dump group shit coins can make you a millionaire they can also make you they can also make you crazy okay okay so avoid those pump and dump group those pump and dump group those pump and dump group you know what they'll do they'll buy a coin now the coin is one dollars they'll go and buy they can't get to 1.20 dollars once you go and put your money hmm. <laughs> And those Ghana guys, they can dance with you very well. They'll be dancing with your money in Binance Exchange. And, you know, Binance will just be there saying, oh, you can keep trading with us, just like Tanya and Emmanuel and Danny. Keep trading with us. Keep trading with us. Okay. So this is my WhatsApp number. Uh, 070-3521-9208. I hope my Ghana brother... They know those guys. Those guys are they, they've gone global. Trump has posted them. Uh, Trump, Trump has posted them. So they are the biggest set of people. So in case your market crash, just go and call the Ghanaian guys. They will help you carry the coffee. Okay. So on Thank Twitter, you. I am Chris Annie. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for this session. Thank you, Taya. Thank you, Rafa. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Dami. And I really, really appreciate. It. Thank you for this session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. That was very informative. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you to all our speakers, Emmanuel, Tanya, and thank you to the angels for supporting and answering questions, and thank you to the attendees. Now, before we go, I just want to say a last thank you to our media partners, um, Lightblocks. I don't know if Sammy is on the call. Uh, Lightblocks.live, uh, Global Crypto, and Bitcoin KE. Um, before we, we wrap up, we need to have the third giveaway so i'm going to share the form now for the third giveaway while i've shared i'm sharing the form derek can you tell us the winners of the second giveaway derek are you still there yeah sure um okay i've shared the, the everyone please check the chat function i've just shared the third giveaway form the first five correct answers will win um derek can you tell us about the second giveaway form winners Hey, Emma, please give me access to share my screen. Yeah, you have now. Thank you. I wish you there. And please, you guys should also go on Twitter and tag Binance. Tell them what you learned. Okay, tell, tell them thank you for today's session. Okay, tag Binance, tag ZZ. Let them know that the Nigerian... Crypto space is also on fire. Yes, and I'll be sharing our Telegram groups for all our communities in Nigeria, South Africa, Uganda, Cameroon. If you're not um, a member of those Telegram groups, please join now. We share a lot of good information on them and a lot of updates. Derek, please take it away and let us know um, about the second giveaway Great. winners. We had uh, our five winners for the second question, and uh, we had Collins. Eva Evans, Darlington, Catherine, and uh, Olutope. Uh, the question was, how many 
how many bitcoins can possibly exist and the answer was 21 million and what was the first currency listed what was the first african currency listed on p2p and that was uh, ngn thank you guys awesome um are the responses for the this um, particular giveaway session that has been posted is it ready yet they're still going and i think what we can do is if you guys want to answer um any questions using you know the ones that haven't been answered yet if you want to answer any questions live this is a good opportunity to do that or emmanuel is there anything else you have in mind yeah great okay so i think while we wait for the final responses to come in so we can know the um, winners for the last tv race um we can just take some questions so if you have questions just raise your hand i will allow you to talk we we'll only take three questions um I mean, so that, i'm thinking they should they should type it because i'm i think they should type it in the q a format again in the q a function and then you take whatever answers you feel are relevant okay. there's, a lot of questions. there's been a lot of questions and yes there's been a lot of questions there, so they, they should probably type it yeah. chris can you take some now i see a, a bunch of questions how much how much money do you need to start trading <laughs> i can i can take so i'm going to be selective on the ones i take please do please go ahead could you take about five so, questions and then we'll go into the giveaway? I should go to the Q&A session. The Q Use &A. the Q&A function, yes. And please take maybe four to five questions if you can. And then we'll go and look okay. at the winners of the third giveaway. Okay. Uh, somebody is asking, is there any coin or token that have reward applications in the Nigerian market? Something related to financial transactions. I don't think that's a crypto. What we are talking here is about financial transactions, okay? Most of what we're talking about here is um, financial transaction. Somebody said, Mr. Chris, please say something about EMA. I can't say anything about that. It's a long, Binance time is over. It's a long, in-depth stuff. And let me even share some things with you guys, okay? Uh, research, learning to research on your own would also help, okay? I can't say anything about, um, if it's EMA, we'll start doing another one-hour lecture here, yeah? okay? Um, how does Binance leverage work? If you don't know how Binance leverage work, don't do it now. Because for you to ask, it means you don't know. So if I were you, let me give you one, let me give you a sincere advice as a trader, as a profitable trader. Don't do leverage now. Master trading win by win. Like do trading win, 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 win. Then going with your huge capital, enter leverage. Okay? Uh, so I say, can we learn crypto trading from you? Yes, I have a platform called Dabba.school. People can I have a trade that make money course, www.dabba.school. I have a trade that make money course there where we teach crypto trading. I also have crypto money bundle. I shared it earlier on, okay? You can actually chat. Please, what's the name of the coin, at least for joining this meeting? I can't, I don't give trade advice in public sessions like this. Why? I don't know your ability to trade, man. Okay, I can go and tell you, you buy a coin now, and the coin goes down. You say, Chris, you should buy this coin. But my group already know what they should do, when they should buy, when they should set stop loss, and when they should sell. Okay, I'm looking for Google questions. Where are they? Do you have a signal group? I'm in South Africa. Yes, I do. It's a premium group. I do. I do that. Um, do you always stick to your plan, sell and take profit, even when the trend is still up? Now, let me share something with you. This week, there's a coin called RVN. And guess what I did with that coin? That coin, my plan was to sell at 249250. And guess what? But from the chart, the coin is looking like something that can even go to 300. Guess what happened? I put my sell at 250. And everybody was like, ah. This thing will still go up. This will go up. Guess what? The coin, I saw that 250 immediately, it dumped to 218. Okay, stick with your plan. Now, even if you don't stick with your plan, this is me. This bat I'm holding now. If this bat doesn't move in the next two weeks, I may exit the trade. I may exit the trade. I'll keep looking at the market and I may exit the trade. I may exit the trade if I really need another set of money to trade another opportunity. But if not, I'll stay there. Somebody said, please share a little lecture on how to calculate retracements in the Elliott Wave. That's why, don't do these things, guys. You are, you are, you are making it hard for yourself. Did you see Elliott Wave like that on, on, on Binance Trading Technicals? Very simple. See all these, all these Elliott Wave. This is a, a grammar. Somebody can use 
just support and resistance and make a killing in the market. Go and ask the best of traders. Somebody is saying Bitcoin is volatile uh, at point at a point in the future it could be replaced. Fiat. How can goods be valued? That's another discussion for another day. Okay. How do you know the right percentage of stop loss set? It is based on trade plan. Okay. Trade plan and tells you, okay, I can do five percent. I can do twenty percent. I can do twenty percent. Um, Charles said, what's the best time frame to trade with some of the indicators you mentioned? Depending on your goal, there's four hours, there's one hour. There's even for 30 minutes, depending on your goal, okay? Depending on your goal, okay? Depending on your goal. Um, what's the advantage of market cap to a trading? What's the advantage of market cap to a trading? Uh, what's the advantage of market cap to a trading? Well, liquidity is, if I want to get your question where it's about liquidity, trade assets in the market that have liquidity, except you want to trade the low liquidity so that when they put in money, your money in that thing can pump. But you must know the disadvantage of trading assets that do not have liquidity. Wilson said, I have a question. It's always said, past performance doesn't guarantee future results. It is doing, analysis are for possible outcomes, not for hundred percent outcomes, it's like saying CZ invested in Bitcoin early. If you ask CZ, he never knew Bitcoin would get so soon to nineteen thousand. But he just used wow, um, um, uh, oh, Bitcoin was this amount then. Wow. Okay, I bought that. He sold his house, and it was based. It's, it's all risk. It's all so. What this time you're taking a calculated risk based on information, just like the way they do for streets, then by June, we're going to see social number. They may not happen like that. They are just for forecast sake and for planning sake, okay? They are for forecast and for planning sake. Okay, I think that's all. Can I, in case I lose my phone, good, I need to answer this question. In short, if you don't get anything, get this. I want to beg you all, I want to beg you, put your ears like this as you're listening. If you're using, for me, eh, there's a reason why I use Binance as my wallets and for exchange. Binance can do those futures. Babalola, am I correct? Yeah. Binance can do those futures. If you are like me, sometimes I forget my password. So it's easy for me to go to Binance and click forget password and Binance will retrieve the stuff for me. Binance has an excellent support system. But some of you will go and start with blockchain wallet. I'm not condemning blockchain wallet. You will not back up your phrase. There's a joke going around this weekend in Nigeria. Girlfriend, go delete by uh, blockchain wallet. Go install TikTok. $5,000, don't go. No, it's the joke, right? What it is? It's happening. Some people can mistakenly... You know, blockchain.info will not even give you a forget password. What do you do? Go and make sure you back up. Go and make sure you back up your wallet. If you don't know what you should do, I'll back up so but sometimes I don't take, put it there by us. So that even if you lose your... Phone, you can reach out to Binance support. You know, it's, you know what it means for you to reach out to Binance people, okay? And you can reach out to their customers. A meeting like this, their Telegram channel. Even if you, you lose your two FA, but make sure you store it. You can still retrieve your account. But if you do that for For blockchain wallets, but oh, I think we've lost Chris there. Yes, um, I'm having issues hearing him as well. But yeah. um, while since we can't do, um, he's not here right now. Derek, okay. let's um, should we okay. get the giveaway answers now? Hello? My network went off. Oh, Chris is back. Yeah, okay. Chris, if you could just okay, wrap so up your answer back. to that question and then we'll would, go into the giveaway. No, 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 let, me, let me show you something, guys, on support and resistance, okay? Uh, for support and resistance, okay, 
uh, you don't need to even do a draw. Just use your eyes and look at it. And you can take your whatever and put the pen there and you can actually spot the zone. When you spot the zone, take it and write. Write it out, look at it on paper and say, these are my support zones and these are the resistance zones. Okay, I'm not sure you know this. Support and resistance zone. Good to go. Okay, and let me tell you this before venture is a continuous business, knowledge. And it's that talks about so do everything. Binance has given you an opportunity to have, have a free lecture for this. I, I saw some, some people say, Why is he talking about pay? You don't get this thing. I paid a US teacher to teach me this thing early. Ask Baba Lola. We've been in this game since 2016. 2016 yeah. is a business, trading is not a side hustle for me. It's a business. So when I put in $30,000 in the market, I'm looking at it as somebody like Dan Bote is investing in his refinery because my profit is here. This is the platform where I can sit down and I can mint money for the first time in history without carrying a bag and going to a government house online. You don't understand how this is. You can be in South Africa. You can be in Ghana. And thank God for what Binance has done. Binance has and actually that's broken all those barriers. South Africa, Uganda, and I will stay with my own. Even if you're not having a job, and you have $100, $200, $1,000, you sit down in your house and you trade. See, let me tell you, even if it's 5%, you get $50. In Nigeria, that's like the minimum wage because $4 is now $430. That's the minimum wage. You're earning in dollars. You now have a platform. You can earn on a global scale. That is what makes this thing not just a side hustle, not just um, the normal skill you get. It's a high income skill. And it can you. And change your life. The same way it has done for me, the same way it has done for CZ joining us. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Chris. I think Chris's video is um, acting for me. It's a bit slow. Can you guys hear me? I'm having issues with connection mm -hmm. as well. Derek, can you please take it away? Can you let us know about the winners of the third giveaway form? Thanks. Thanks, Danny. Um, uh, Emma, please give me access to share my screen. And Chris, I'm going to need you to help uh, select the winners for uh, this last sec this last last session. Okay. Okay, so. How do you? Yeah. Um, how do I, I, do that? I, I'm sharing the screen now, and the the, okay. the the questions have been said. At what point is RSI overbought? What is the answer? Okay. Uh, at what point is RSI oversold? Okay, that's thirty at thirty, then above seventy is overbought. Yes, that's the answer. Uh, so I should select randomly because a lot of them are getting the answers. Okay, it's fine. You select randomly. Okay. But they must uh, get, no, just to say, you must get both answers correct. Okay, both answers correct. How many am I selecting? Uh, you're selecting five. You ask me to scroll down. So you could select one now, then I scroll down, then you select okay. another. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, so there is somebody on number 29. Muna Jasmine, I think he got it. One. Muna Jasmine. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, that's and, one. Mm. Okay, so how many remaining? Four remaining. How many left? How many do I need to select again? You four. Need four more. Yeah. Okay, so number 52, Steven Chuku. 52, 52. Okay. Yeah, then um, number 50, Marvelous Maculia. Uh, number 50. Um, oh, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, then um, I'm seeing another one. Bola Gade. Oh, you, okay. I'm seeing one name there. I think you scroll. So I have two more, right? Yeah. 
two more. Okay. Um, I, I saw one who got the answer to two. Uh, okay, let me take number 84, Patrick. Number 84, Patrick. Okay, and I've seen the other guy, number yeah. 80, number 84, and number 81. Yeah, number 81 got it very well, too. Number 81 and number 84. This from 100 for 70 to 100 and from 30 to zero. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bola Gadi got it. That's number 81. Is it four or five? Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. I think we selected one, four. So three, three, one. No, they are done. That's the. Uh, that's all. Right. Yeah, we got all of them. Okay. So is the it, winners is it, are Muna, 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 Jess, Jess Mira, Marvelous Marquez, Stephen Chuku, uh, Gulade, and so Patrick Sunday. No, that's okay, all. Fine. That, that's really great. Great, 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 great. Okay, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we've reached the end of the masterclass. Thanks again to Chrisani for that very invigorating session. Uh, thank you to everyone for your great questions. Emmanuel, Tanya, thank you. Is there anything about Binance, uh, Nigeria, Binance South Africa, and Binance? Anything you want to add? Emmanuel? Yeah, I think that's all from, from me. I really um, hope that as many of you that have heard everything from us today, go put these things into practice, learn, you know, um, contact us on the group, reach out to Chris when you can, and as much as possible, get involved. Get involved, do your research, and let's see each other at the top. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This is the end of the masterclass. Um, the winners will be contacted from the giveaways. Have a great evening. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Maya. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, you. Bye. Thank you, Thank you very much, David. <laughs>